In this video segment, we're going to explore a feature in Corecon's contract admin module called change orders or COs. Sometimes these are also called prime change orders just to differentiate them from subcontract change orders. To find this feature, go to projects, select a project, then to client contract admin. The feature is found under the contract admin and is labeled COs. Before we show you how to create change orders or COs, there's a few things to keep in mind. A change order has several status options. They occur in the sequence draft, pending submission, pending, not approved, or approved. A change order only impacts the finances of a project and prime contract once the change order status has been marked approved and a status date has been assigned. To be included on a prime invoice, a change order must be marked approved. Change order status date must be less than or equal to the prime contract invoice's issue date. A few reminders. Before you create a change order, make sure that the project owner or customer that will be reviewing the change order is also listed in the project directory. A change order must have an approved prime contract. Job cost codes must be established as are referenced on the change order proposed items. If they're not already in this project specific job cost code list, they can be added from the actions button. We're going to illustrate two ways to create change orders. And those will be the add manual method and adding a change order from an estimate. There are other ways to add change orders covered in other training videos. For example, there is an allowance package to change order wizard, a CPR to change order wizard, and a work order to change order wizard. Let's start the first change order by adding manually. Notice that I already have a project selected and I also have a prime contract that's been marked approved. I'm gonna to go to change orders, go to actions, and I'm going to add manually. The project and prime contract have already been tagged. We'll set the issue date. Mark this approved so that it does affect the project financials. We're also going to give it a status date. Usually the change order status would remain pending until your customer or project owner has approved. But in this case, we're going to mark it approved. I'm going to select the initiated by, which is a list that you can find in global settings under the contract admin feature. We're going to say that this change order was requested by the owner and a subject. A change order usually is the result of a change in conditions or change in contract scope. The customer and the customer contact filled in automatically from the prime contract, your company and your contact will fill in automatically as well. We're gonna give this a little scope. If you wanna add a drawing that's already been uploaded, you can select the icon. You can do the same for RFIs. We'll put a spec section in. We can also ask for an additional amount of time on the contract. We'll ask for seven working days and click next. We can also drag and drop files into this rectangle so that they're added. We'll add one other. But I could also click link existing and add a file that's already been uploaded to this project or I can add from my file browser and then click finish. That short wizard completed the header of our change order. There's another section though we want to fill in and that is the change order items. When I click add import, notice you can add manually. You can import items from your cost database, from an existing estimate, from Excel, from job cost codes, and a change order can be a cost plus type and there's provisions for that on the menu as well. Let's add our first change order item 
by importing from job cost codes. We're just going to need three items. And we're going to go ahead and enter the unit price. This would be the amount including markup, profit, overhead, or fee. And we're going to make this lump sum. And click add and close. Using that particular method only adds a unit price or the amount we're going to charge the customer, client, or project owner. It does not add the budget. The budget is, however, very important, especially when calculating percentage complete. So we'll go back and add that as well. I'm just going to click on the first item. You'll notice at the top that the unit price appears. If you scroll down to the second section, this is the cost budget. This would be something less than the amount that shows under the price. So let's say we're going to pay the subcontractor $18,000 for that. And click Save and Next. And Line 2, for Project Coordination. The unit price is $2,250. We're going to go down and put in $1,750 for the budget and $175 for burden since it's labor. Then save and next. Line three for the progress cleaning. We'll also add a labor budget of 1500 and burden of 150. Save and close. Again, there are additional ways to add these items in the Add Import Items menu, we only covered one in this video. Let's go to the top of this page and go to the Reports and the CO Proposal. You can see there's several ways to print this out. We're just going to choose one for now. The first page of the change order is a summary of the original contract value, any change orders that have been marked approved, and a revised contract value. There's a place to sign. The information regarding the project, the contract, and project owner all appear at the top. The logo that appears on this change order would be your logo. The next page is the details. You can also email this change order from the export option going to email PDF and then click OK. All of the information is filled in including the routing, there are the attachments that we chose, and there's a preview of what the email looks like and click send email. If we go back to contract admin there's a second way we want to add a change order and that is from an existing estimate. The estimate that we're going to be converting to a change order is in the projects menu and right now it's under estimates and RFP packages. The fifth estimate made specifically for this change order. If we go to view estimate and select the items and we're going to switch the view to location and cost code you'll notice that there's three locations that have been added. You want, may also want to notice that they're Global markups have already been added. And if we go to the estimate summary, you can see a sell rate, a cost, and a projected gross profit on this change order. A proposal could be printed here. We're going to convert this estimate to a change order. So let's go back to projects, go back to client, contract, admin, down to change orders and to Actions, and Add from Estimate. The project number fills in. We're going to switch the estimate number to number 5. We're going to create a change order, although we optionally could create a change proposal request. And this is a new transaction. Click Next. Initiated by would be your client, customer, or project owner's company and contact. Your company would appear here with your contact. We're going to go ahead and send this out as approved, but usually it would wait till the owner 
signs and approves this. Let's also give a different date and a different status date. And we're going to go ahead and link any existing files. Click Next. On this page, you have a few options. First of all, the level of detail. You can choose to summarize the change order by cost code, or you can include more detail by selecting estimate line items with corresponding cost code. Reset the cost code numbering if necessary. And we could also include owner codes from the internal grouping codes. And click finish. We'll scroll down. Notice that the items have all come in both with a sell total or sell price and a cost budget. Each has been assigned to a job cost code. We we'll go up to reports, change order proposal. Let's group these by job cost code. And click OK. Again, the first page is a summary of the original contract value, all approved change orders, a revised contract value, the project information, contract information, the customer owner information, a place to sign. The second page is the line item details. Change orders can also be edited once you've created them. There's two places to do this. The change order header information can be edited by clicking on this yellow pencil icon, which switches the screen back to what's very similar to the manual entry screen. We're going to select a initiated by, also the owner. We could adjust the description, the subject, contacts, additional information regarding the scope, we could add a drawing, an RFI if one existed, and we could also request an additional amount of time. We'll ask for 13 working days. Click Save and Close. The details can also be edited by clicking on the yellow pencil next to Change Order Items. and click Save. If you'd like to know more about the information included in this training video, we suggest that you go to the Help Articles, to CoreCon, to Leads and Projects, to Contract Administration, and under Contract Changes, the information covered in this training video as well as additional information you might find helpful in this article.